Bill has, has put together a, an offensive system that really just fits their personnel, uh, and they drive hard, they cut hard, uh, they um, screen hard, and then they finish off possessions where at least three guys are going to the class, you know, hard. So as much as you can try to show it on film, you can talk about it, um, there's no way to really prepare for it until you actually feel it, and, and I think that that's what caught us uh, in that first half. Um, you know, the 19 second chance points, but a lot of those were, were you know, driving situations that led to um, different guys on different people. And then they just, you know, were pummeling us in the paint. Um, but in the second half, there was a better disposition, um, much more uh, to how we've been playing the last uh, three weeks. Uh, and then that stretch, uh, you know, when we had Caleb and, and Highsmith in there, they were basically just running a two man press, uh, running around. Uh, creating havoc, uh, and and that was that that ignition that kind of uh, propelled us into that fourth quarter of energy and and um, and inspiration, and then Bam and Jimmy, you know, really took over from there. Uh, you know, when Bam and Jimmy, uh, you know, play with that competitive spirit um, and they're connected from a competitive standpoint, you know, our, our guys feel like we can beat. Uh, anyone that we can conquer, you know, whatever we need to conquer. Um, and they were at their best on both ends of the court. Um, Caleb, you know, has a messed up, you know, hand, uh, knocked in the in the mouth. You know, every play he makes is, uh, is you know, just a collision here, a collision there. Um, he inspires everybody in our locker room, uh, and he's just a gamer. You know, he just makes big plays at the right times um, and it inspires other guys to do the same. When Jimmy's getting so many, um, and Jaime got a couple too, when he's getting those really deep post seals, how much of that is play calling from the sidelines versus just instinctual stuff on his part? And if it's the latter, how do you sort of train everybody to watch for those little instinctual moments when he's going to seal somebody? Yeah, it, it's happened. Look, look, we've been doing this now for several months. Uh, you know, and it was interrupted a little bit when he was out. Uh, but the, the connection with K Love and, and Jimmy, you know, those were a lot of the habits that we were building. Jaime started to, to get a feel for that. Um, and then when Jimmy was out, we were doing similar things with Jaime. Some of that was uh, intentional, you know, early on and play call stuff. Uh, and then, you know, by this point, it's happening more instinctually and, and organically. And, and that's, you know, the better way. Uh, but that takes weeks and months, you know, to develop that kind of um, cohesiveness uh, and to be able to get it there efficiently where you're not just burning clock, you know. Um, you know, we have some good post-entry passers, and that's an underrated skill. Nico is great at it. Jaime's good at it. Bam, obviously, we know what he, he can do, and K-Love is elite at it. Um, and so other guys are starting to recognize those situations uh, earlier and uh, and also BAM's post-ups uh, as well. Look, Jimmy obviously got a bunch at the rim and at the free throw line, but he continues to take and make more threes. How much have you guys continued to stay on him to take those, and have you seen opponents maybe make small adjustments? That's a loaded question. He knows how I feel. If I say too much, then he'll, like, you know, he's the ultimate contrarian. Uh, he's a great shooter. Why not? Like, it's a little papa shot for him. I think put him in a three-point contest next year. Allow him just to shoot that shot. I'll put my money on him. Am I allowed to do that? Oh, all right. I won't go there. Don't put him in a three-point contest. <laughs> uh, big picture, uh, now you guys are 10-3 and three over the last 13. What do you like about just the way your guys have responded since that losing streak in January? Yeah, I think there's a better understanding of what wins for us. We compete and defend. We, we create the karma we need. If we don't, we pay the price. I think in the first half, we were, you know, trying to get uh, a little bit caught up in, in the, the scoring and, and trying to outscore them, and, and then we found, found ourselves down four. Uh, but when we really lock down and, and defend with physicality and force and, and discipline and with a mind, you know, we, we can ac accomplish some things. Um, and I think there's a collective understanding of that and, more importantly, a commitment to that. It's not easy. This, this league is hard. I mean, the offenses now are 
super dynamic, uh, speed, space, and pace uh, makes it challenging for every single team. So you, the, the biggest thing you have to wrap your mind around is doing tough things. Um, and that doesn't even guarantee anything. It just gives you a better chance at it. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you.